Hey, so this video is about how to navigate breastfeeding injuries that are related to a baby pulling off of the breast or popping off of the breast. And this one is particularly close to my heart because this was the most significant breastfeeding injury that I got during my breastfeeding journey. Uh, my son ended up pulling off and popping off so many times and so hard that I ended up getting a blood blister inside one of my nipples. That was not fun. And then to go along with that, uh, the injury developed to a point where I ended up with an infection and I got a really nasty case of mastitis. If I can help you avoid this or recover from it, then uh, my goodness, okay, I will be so happy about that. So I hope this video is helpful for you. Here you go. Um, if your baby is pulling or popping off, this is a trickier one to navigate because it's a bad Bad behavior that your baby is rewarded for babies when they pull off or pop off the end result is that it often causes a letdown more milk is brought to the front of the breast making it more easily accessible and easier to eat and so baby does this and goes haha oh that's a nice outcome and so the body reinforces for them that this is something that they should keep doing so if you are trying to train your baby to not do it you're kind of working against your body. Your body says, do it. And you are saying, no, honey, you're going to have to figure out something else. You need to do something different. So here are some potential reasons for why they're doing it and ways for you to overcome it. So very first thing, if it's simply uh, related to easily accessible food, couple of tricks. You can, before breastfeeding baby, shake your breasts, jiggle things around. By uh, jiggling your boobs, what you're going to end up doing is helping the liquid to settle further forward. It will make it naturally more accessible. And so just if you already shook it down, then maybe there will be no reason for them to pull off or pop off. If it's related to they want more food than what your body had to give at the time because babies are always growing and your body is playing catch up, um, that's how the system works. It's a supply and demand system. Um, then what you can do is just a couple of tricks to try and stay closer to what your baby needs rather than falling behind and experiencing the frustration for both of you that goes along with that. Um, to stay as close as possible with baby's growth, what you can do is again, shake things down so that it's easily accessible. Then make sure that you're feeding your baby often. So I would recommend never allowing more than two or three hours to go by uh, because your body will make milk based on the demand. So make sure your body knows that there's a regular demand instead of letting five, six, eight hours go in between feedings. So every two to three hours and make sure that the breast gets drained. So either, you know, if baby ate down to empty, great, that's awesome. Um, but if you have any suspicions that there might still be liquid in the body, then again, shake it down and learn the skill of hand expression. Because if you hand express the rest of the contents out, then your body goes, wow, okay, no, I really got drained. So next time I need to make that much more. So that's a trick that you can use. Another one that you can use is switch nursing. And switch nursing simply means that if there are indications that baby's getting a little bit frustrated, they're starting to get a little bit fidgety and you're going, oh, a pull off or a pop off is coming. Nope, as soon as you see that shifting, use your fingers to break the seal. Just pull their mouth out to the side a little bit or nip the cheek a little bit so that the seal is broken, air gets in. So they let go of the nipple instead of pulling or suctioning off and switch them to the other side. It's super easy. Now they get down to the other breast where food has had a chance to settle down just a little bit. And if you get to the point where you're going, I'm just trying to buy myself time here. You know, I have a hungry kid and my body hasn't caught up yet. Don't worry about it. There's nothing wrong with you. You do not have to go grab the formula. You do not have to go grab the breast pump. You don't have to reach for tools if they are not part of your plan. If you want to use those things, of course you can. If they're a good fit for your family, of course you can use those. But if those are not part of your original plan, don't feel like you have to give up and now reach for those. Hold the fort. Just keep switch nursing. And even if that means every five seconds, you know, they latch, suckle, suckle, suckle. Now they're starting to fidget. Okay, over we go. You can hold the fort with switch nursing. Another thing you can do is just find something else that soothes them to buy yourself approximately, you know, 20 minutes before putting them back on. Um, something like a shower. Showers were lifesavers for us. Um, my son loved it. He loved the snuggle and cuddle time. He got lots of skin to skin. The water was very soothing for him. And just any time that my body hadn't quite caught up with a growth spurt, it was all good. It bought me the time I needed to be able to sit back down. He was calm and we could go back at it again. Um, so when it comes to easily accessible food or having enough food, there's a couple of different tricks that make it easily accessible. I also made another video that gave you a few more tricks about how to uh, increase your milk supply if that's what you're trying to do. Um, but just easily accessible food, 
all good. That might be the thing that ends the popping and pulling off. Another reason that your baby might be pulling and popping off, and here's the clue to look for, if they are arching backwards. If you see that they're actually bending backwards when they're pulling away from you, um, that's actually an indication that they have uncomfortable gas. It's gas that is sabotaging your baby's ability to eat right now. So when they arch their back and pull off or pop off as a result, instead of trying to get them back onto your breast, um, because they might just keep doing it, and that's a really good way to get an injured nipple, do what you know how to do to ease their gas instead. So um, it might be a burp, but more likely if they're arching backwards, it's abdominal gas, it's lower in the system. That often takes a little bit longer to get out. Um, use whatever tricks you've got, and if you don't have a trick up your sleeve right now or they're not working, um, the one that worked best for our family was little bum wiggles. So keeping your baby supported and having them sitting in your hand and just sort of rotating their little hips around and what that did was it just wiggled the torso enough that it seemed to encourage the bubbles to come out a little bit faster. We used to joke, my husband was really good at it. He would just wiggle the farts right out of my son. Um, it was great. Once that gas was cleared, he was ready to go back to feeding and the pulling and popping off that was associated with gas would stop. So maybe it's just an air bubble in the system. Once you've dealt with that, baby will be able to eat just fine. Um, the last thing is just if you have baby pulling or popping off because they are bracing their arms or bracing their leg against you and then pushing off. If you have a baby who is staying attached while pushing away and the end result is and that's actually how I got injured. It really sucks when they do that because they have that extra suction. They're trying to hold on at the same time that they're trying to push off. That's how I ended up with a blood blister in my nipple. Um, I hope that doesn't happen to you. Um, if you have a baby who's doing that, you have a baby who is testing out their muscles. So uh, you just have this amazing child who's exploring the world and they're just trying to figure out, oh, look what I can do. Urgh, this feels so good. You know, I feel strong when I do this. Look how I can manipulate or interact with things. Um, if that's happening, a couple of things you can do. Um, if there's a specific body part they seem to be pushing off with more, whether it's their hands or their legs, then you can see if you can find something else for that hand or leg to do. So if they start to push, grab their hand and give them little hand kisses or something that just, you know, give them a piece of material to hold on to. Take the string from your sweatshirt and run that through their hands. Give them something else to do with that hand so that they're not pushing. Same thing with the foot, little foot kisses. My son loved that. If I was just sort of nibbling on his toes, then he would stop pushing. He would eat, he'd be smiling and I wasn't getting injured. So with that, you can find something else for those body parts to do or simply teach boundaries. And so some things that you can do to teach boundaries and encourage your child, you know, here's a positive way to interact with me. Please stop doing this. Um, you can do things like if they're pushing against you, do a startled jump. Okay, that can teach them, oh, I didn't like that. The world shakes when I do that. Okay, I'm going to stop. You can say, ow, no. Your tone of voice can just make clear. I do not like that. You can even say the words, I do not like that. You need to stop. Okay. They might be very young. It doesn't matter. You're laying out the language foundation for when you hear these sounds and in this tone of voice, it means I'm not happy. This needs to stop. Um, if that's not working, you can try time out. So actually setting your child down for a period of time. And so five minutes works just fine. If they realize that, oh, every time I do this, the breast is taken away, that can teach them not to do that behavior anymore. Another thing that you can do is use little cheek nips. So you'll notice I'm saying a nip, not a pinch. Please do not injure your child. Um, that wouldn't be good. Um, we're teaching them how to not injure us. We don't want to injure them. A nip is simply using pressure to grab the cheek. And so it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but you can just go, hey, I don't like that. And to go along with that, it breaks the seal because it tends to pull their cheek out to the side a little bit. So if they were trying to pull and pop off, then it breaks the seal so they can't do that. If they're already off the went and they're looking at you, you can say, no, honey, I don't like that. Okay, so a little nip on the cheek is just that physical reinforcement for them that, no, I, I don't enjoy that. That needs to stop. Um, with that in mind, just depending on your cultural context, some of those might be a good fit. Some of those might sound like the worst idea ever. They are simply tools that are available and that humanity and their broad cultural spectrum, you know, that we have available to us. Choose what's the best fit for your family. And I hope that's helpful for you. So all the best. Bye.